All right, welcome back to another edition of How to Fix It Yourself. Our videos are designed to help people find easy fixes that they can do themselves without spending a lot of money on mechanics and uh, replacing parts that don't need to be replaced. So often when you have a uh, repair, and hopefully you've been following our repairs on this F-150 1994 pickup truck. So if you've been following along with us, hopefully you've uh, followed our videos on how to do a tune-up. Uh, we also chased out uh, a fuel rail problem to make sure that we didn't need to replace the fuel pumps. But as you do these repairs, often something else will pop up. And that's what we've got today. So we started getting a check engine light on the dashboard and we've been uh, trying to figure out what that was all about. First thing we did was to make life easy, we went down to an automotive store and asked them to pull the codes. Now, these older uh, engines do have codes, but the, in the instruments that they use for pulling those codes are not very good. And so, of course, it came back with no codes and that the check engine light should not be on, and we knew better than that. So we had to go to the way these engine control modules have been designed, which is to flash the codes on the dashboard on the check engine light. Now we're not gonna go through that on this video because this is a fairly short video. There's other videos that will cover that and there's also written descriptions that will cover how to read those codes. We read the codes and we came up with a code 332. A 332 code is an EGR problem. So there's something not working quite right with the EGR valve. So the EGR valve on this engine is right here. And what throws the um, 332 code is this sensor right here. If this sensor doesn't uh, move or detect any movement on the valve in here, then it's going to throw that code. And what causes the valve to move is the vacuum line right back here. So clearly this is the first place you want to check. So we have a vacuum gauge here and we'll start up the engine and we'll check to see if we have any vacuum going to the EGR valve. Now, the vacuum that gets to the EGR valve when it's working well is very, very slight. So we'll only see a very slight movement of the needle if uh, we're getting any vacuum at all. So we have to kind of watch carefully. So we'll go ahead and start the engine and we'll show you the reading on the uh, vacuum gauge and we'll go from there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to pull the vacuum line off of the EGR valve, and we're gonna plug it into our vacuum gauge and see if we get any movement on the needle. Again, the needle won't move very much, but in this case, it's not moving at all. So we're not getting any vacuum to the EGR valve. Now, while it will pull vacuum even on a cold engine, you're always better off warming up the engine before you do this. So go ahead and warm up your engine. Uh, it also will help if you uh, throttle up the engine a little bit to uh, make sure that you're pulling a good uh, manifold vacuum. So the next step, if we're not getting vacuum there, is to go to the activation solenoid valve that uh, directs the vacuum to the solenoid. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the vacuum lines off of the solenoid valve Are chasing the vacuum back to see where we might have an issue, one of the next places to go is to the evap canister here. And as we're going back to the evap canister, we notice that 
there is uh, underneath the heat shield here, there is a break in the vacuum line, which you can see right there. And it was very hard to see because it was covered up by the uh, uh, heat uh, shield. And so I think that's where our problem is. So the easiest way to fix this is to go to the parts store and get just a little splice uh, tube. They have these because these little vacuum lines break, especially on older cars. It's a very easy fix. You'll notice we just slide it on one side, get it down on there, oh, an inch or so. It doesn't have to be super down uh, deep on that. Go ahead and plug in the other side, slide it down. And it really isn't going to work to put the shielding back on. If you want, you can put it up here on this end, but you're still going to be exposed because that splice is going to be a little bit large. So it's up to you whether you want to put that on or not. I'm going to leave it off. There's not a whole lot of sense at this point. Where you really need the shielding is down in here, and we've got it on there. So that should fix our problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the solenoid. We're going to check to make sure we have manifold pressure uh, vacuum. If we have manifold vacuum, then we're going to check to make sure we have vacuum here at the EGR valve. So now we're going to check for manifold vacuum at the solenoid valve. So again, we're going to pull these hoses off of there. The engine's running, and now that we plug it into the manifold line, the white one, uh, you'll notice that we get a very good vacuum pull, and so we're definitely got a uh, good manifold vacuum going into the valve. So we can now remove that, plug these back in, and now we need to check to make sure that the solenoid is working properly. So we're going to go back over to the EGR valve and see if we've got vacuum there. Here we are, we're back at the EGR valve. The vacuum line. Now it's not going to move much. The needle's not going to move much. So you just have to watch it and you'll notice that it does move. You notice it got right down there by the uh, red line. So we know we now have vacuum to the EGR valve. So that should resolve our issue and the 332 code should be now resolved and we've uh, fixed the EGR problem on the engine. So we've resolved the issue. We've taken the truck out for a ride. Uh, the check engine light has not come back on, so we've definitely resolved the issue with the EGR code. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've learned some things about uh, chasing vacuum leaks. Fortunately, we didn't have to replace an EGR valve or the solenoid but we did check everything down the line to make sure that uh, all those parts were still good and that we actually had resolved the issue. Cheap little piece of hose and uh, we're good to go. So be sure and give us a thumbs up uh, that you like this video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed, and below you'll find links to tools and other um, items that will be useful to you as you go about doing uh, your own repairs on your car. So we've hopefully this is another useful how to fix it yourself video for you. Thank you for your time and attention.